Good morning, everyone. As we begin this morning, I just want to acknowledge the incredible devastation and the pain um, endured by the residents of Florida uh, through Hurricane Milton. This follows, of course, the devastating impact of Hurricane Helene. I want you to know that our hearts are with those impacted and all of those who are in the process of responding right now to that crisis. We currently have MEMA staff down south responding to these uh, severe storms. Uh, we have folks on the ground in North Carolina and South Carolina, and we have offered assistance and are prepared to assist in Florida as well. Um, but I wanted to begin this morning with, uh, with that acknowledgement. I know that there are a lot of folks here in Massachusetts with a lot of family in all of these places, and uh, our hearts and our prayers go out to all involved. Today we are here to celebrate. Today we're here to celebrate what is the biggest federal funding award that the MBTA has ever received. $472 million to replace and modernize a critical piece of transportation infrastructure. That is the North Station Draw One Drawbridge. It's going to mean faster commutes, a stronger economy, and importantly, a better quality of life for our residents. It's great to be here today with so many partners in government who work to make this possible. Our federal champions, Senators Warren and Markey, who have been bringing home unprecedented investments to Massachusetts, and we're grateful to them. Our state legislative leaders, including Chair Aaron Michaelwitz, whose district we are in. Also joining us shortly will be uh, Chair and Senator Brendan Crichton of the Transportation Committee. And we have with us Senator Lydia Edwards. Joining us as well, our administration's all-star team of transportation experts, Secretary Monica Tibbetts-Nutt, GM Phil Eng, members of MassDOT and the MassDOT board and the MBTA board. Quentin Palfrey, our director of federal funds and infrastructure. We created that office a little over a year ago so that we were better able to seize on opportunities like the one that we're celebrating today. We also have with us federal transportation officials, appreciate the partnership between the state and the federal government. We're also joined by labor leaders, and that's important because nothing gets done without our workforce. Thank you to Chrissy Lynch of the AFL-CIO, Frank Callahan of the Building Trades, Bobby Butler of the Sheet Metal Workers Union. Um, and I just want to say thank you to all the men and women who every day are working out there to, uh, to make all these improvements and deliver the kind of service that our residents need and deserve. Shortly we'll be joined by Mayor Michelle Wu, um, who has been a leader in innovation in transportation and so many other critical issues. And uh, let me just say a, a couple things. This is um, this draw one project that we're celebrating today. This is a big deal for our state. We made a commitment at the start of this administration that we were going to get after it when it came to making improvements to transportation infrastructure. And we've been able to do that over the last 20 months. Today is another example of that. Think about Draw Run, Draw One, which is what we call this project, and the critical role that it plays. You may not realize this, but every year, over a million people, 11 million people, cross this bridge either on the MBTA commuter rail or on Amtrak. They're commuting to and from work. They're visiting our businesses. They're going to healthcare and doctor's appointments. And they're coming from all over, from Fitchburg to Lowell to Haverhill to Newburyport to Rockport. On Amtrak, they're coming down from New Hampshire, as far north as Brunswick, Maine. This bridge, you see, is a critical piece of our regional economy. And it opens thousands of times every year, of course, to let marine traffic pass through. But this bridge is 100 years old. And the MBTA, with our partnership, has made it a priority not only to replace the bridge, but to expand it so that it has the capacity to meet the modern era. We're going to increase train capacity as well as platform capacity right here at North Station. And we're going to do this without disrupting daily commutes 
for commuters. We're going to ensure that people, ideas, goods, and capital will continue to flow, and in fact will flow better as we help grow our economy. Draw One is a great example of why we've made it such a priority to go after and win federal funding. We saw the opportunities that the Biden-Harris administration and our federal delegation have created through the bipartisan infrastructure law and so much more. So we set about establishing a super aggressive strategy to work across government, across the state, working with labor as well, because we want to ensure that this is done in workplaces that are safe and that workers are well paid for the important work that they're doing. We did this in partnership. We've said from the beginning, it's all about Team Massachusetts. And this is another example of Team Massachusetts delivering for folks in this state. So far, we've secured over $8.6 billion in federal funding, more than half of which is the direct result of our competing for, applying for, and winning these discretionary grants. In transportation infrastructure alone, we've won $1.7 million for the Cape Cod bridges, $335 million for the Alston multimodal project, $108 million for the West East Rail that's going to connect Springfield through Worcester and Boston, $75 million for schools to electrify their bus fleets, and $60 million for transit agencies to acquire zero and low emission buses. A year ago, just one year ago, Massachusetts was ranked 34th among all states for infrastructure funding. In just one year, we've moved from 34 to seven in the country. That's a big deal. And I'm proud of our teams. I'm proud of the partnerships at the local, state, and federal level. I'm proud of the public-private partnerships that we have. I'm grateful to the legislature for their support, as seen recently by the important federal funds bill that's going to help us maximize our opportunity, because now we want to move from seven to one, of course. But Massachusetts, we're punching above our weight. I think this is the kind of project that our residents need. You know, it's really important that we invest in transportation infrastructure. Today, through this award, we're able to do that. We're not going to leave any stone unturned as we work to make sure that Massachusetts is the best place to work, the best place to live, the best place to raise a family. Once again, I want to congratulate GM Phil Lang. He and his team have been doing an outstanding job in the last 20 months, improving service for our residents. I want to thank the Biden-Harris administration for their support, and I want to thank our congressional delegation for the important pieces of legislation that have enabled a lot of this federal funding to come through to Massachusetts. And with that, I'd like to bring up our great Senator Elizabeth Warren and thank her for all the work and the advocacy that she's done in bringing about this kind of funding. Senator Warren. Thank you, Governor Healy. It is great to be here and it is even better to be here to celebrate this huge federal investment. The largest federal award ever to the T. So <clears throat> this is one day for celebrating partnership. Thanks to our strong federal, state, and local partnership, we're bringing nearly half a billion dollars home to replace the North Station Draw One Bridge. I just gotta say, woohoo! that's what we wanna do. This long overdue investment is a game changer for thousands of riders who pass through North Station every day. And it will make our public transit system safer and more reliable across the Commonwealth and throughout the entire region. This funding is a win, win, win. It'll fund top priority infrastructure project while supporting over 14,500 good jobs, good union jobs, making, and it will make this bridge more climate resilient. 
Those are just some of the reasons that I fought hard to pass the bipartisan infrastructure law. And let me say, there is nothing better than bringing these investments home to Massachusetts. I've worked with my colleagues in Congress and Massachusetts leaders to bring home more than $50 billion in federal investments, including more than $20 billion in just the last three years alone. And that support means big wins for our workers, big wins for our climate, and big wins for our communities and for the future generations who will feel the impact of these investments for decades and decades to come. Everyone who is in front of you today is going to keep fighting to bring these federal investments home to Massachusetts. That's why we're here, to mark this moment, both for the money we've brought in and for our commitment to bring more of it. That's why we're here. And with that, I want to introduce the best possible partner anyone could ask for in the United States Senate, particularly when we're in the fight to get more infrastructure spending and to make that spending happen here in Massachusetts. And that's my partner, Ed Markey. Thank you, Elizabeth. So, yeah, so what? What Elizabeth and I do every day down in Washington, working with the congressional delegation, is we try to figure out how can we get more federal money for Governor Healy and her great team. Uh, and they're number one in the country in getting this money. And that's what Senator Warren uh, and I and our entire team does in order uh, to have projects like this become a reality. And I don't think that people can help but notice that because of the bipartisan infrastructure law, it's a good time to be an old bridge in Massachusetts. The Sagamore Bridge will sag no more. And here at North Station, we are going to have a $472 million grant to replace the North Station rail drawbridge from the U.S. Department of Transportation's mega program. And this mega grant was the largest in the country this round, accounting for nearly 30% of all funding nationwide is coming here to Knott Station. So it continues our unprecedented championship run in securing funding for the MBTA. We're hanging a new championship banner here at North Station, uh, hoping that the Bruins and the Celtics this winter will add more. We've won over a half a billion dollars in federal grants this year alone for the T, and nearly $2.4 billion in federal funding has come to the T since the start of the Biden-Harris administration. And that money, is not only helping return the T to a state of good repair, but also includes $156 million to purchase battery electric buses. So communities along major transit corridors in Quincy, Roxbury, and Dorchester can breathe cleaner air. $133 million for accessibility improvements along the Green Line, $22 million for bus lanes in environmental justice communities like Everett and in Boston. And all these projects are delivering for riders, especially black, brown, and lower income riders, and riders with disabilities who disproportionately use the T. And those projects will be constructed with union labor, led by workers right here in Massachusetts. Thanks to our close working relationship with the AFL-CIO and the building trades, there is already a project labor agreement in place for this project. We thank Chrissy Lynch, we thank Frank Callahan, and all the building trades for their great work. It's all aboard the express route to justice, and the bipartisan infrastructure law is the MBTA's ticket to ride. North Station. Shirley, North Lemonster, Hitchcock, and Montezuma. 
all of those destinations are going to benefit from this project. And we thank, we thank the announcer for making it clear how vast the benefits of this program are going to be because North Station is the beating heart of the public transit north of Boston. It's also the entry point for TD Garden. And just like the Celtics and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to long-term deals through this $472 million grant, Massachusetts is signing a long-term deal with train travel here in Greater Boston. This investment is going to unleash unbelievable opportunities uh, all across uh, the northern part of our, our Commonwealth. Uh, this existing bridge dates back to the Great Depression. We need a modern, safe, reliable bridge for the more than 11 million people who travel to and from Boston through North Station every year. And by the way, this is going to not only replace the old, but it's going to expand to make uh, transit by rail even more possible in the future. So this is an incredible moment, uh, and we thank everybody who has played a role in bringing this to a reality. We thank the Biden-Harris administration for leading the charge to make all of this possible. And I also want to commend, again, the indispensable partners uh, on all of these issues. Senator Warren, our whole delegation, Governor Healy, Secretary Tibbetts Nutt, Mayor Wu, Director Palfrey, Chairman Michael Witz, Chairman Crichton, who is here, uh, Senator Edwards, and our whole congressional delegation. And finally, I want to commend General Manager Phil Eng, the MBTA board, and the MBTA staff who are working each and every day to secure this funding, repair the T, and build a public transit system that will be the envy of the United States. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the leader at the helm of this remarkable period of success for the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, Secretary Monica Tibbetts Nutt. Welcome, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Warren. Thank you, Chairman Mikowitz. Thank you, Chairman Crichton, Senator Edwards. As you can tell, we hands down have the best congressional delegation and we have the best local officials to work with. I have a lot of secretaries that I talk with across the nation and they are so beyond jealous of all the people that I get to work with because it makes my job, it makes the general manager's job significantly easier. From the first day they took office, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll have made it very clear transportation is one of their number one priorities. They understand the impact that a poor transportation system can have on the residents of the Commonwealth. And through working with Quentin Palfrey, through the rest of the administration, we've been able to get unprecedented federal dollars to be able to tackle these infrastructure projects. As the senators both said, our infrastructure is very, very old. And we have wanted to replace this for a very long time. And being able to finally do that is amazing. Being able to work with our union partners makes it to where we can get this work done. We're able to get it done with PLAs. We're able to get it done in a way that we continue to support our workers. The other thing is I also want to give credit to the workers that have been continuously keeping this bridge running. They have kept this running for decades, have done an amazing job, and I'm very excited to be able to give them a much better bridge. So I just want to say thank you, everyone, for coming here today. This is just the first step in the continuation of improving our transit system, improving the options for all of our residents. Independent of what neighborhood you live in, what municipality you live in, you will be able to get top-notch rail service, top-notch service on our roadways, and top-notch rail options throughout Massachusetts. So thank you all for coming here today. And I may be a little biased, but I'm going to introduce who I think is the best partner, General Manager Filling. Thank you, Secretary. <clears throat> this is a big day, not only for MBTA, but for the state <clears throat> and the region. The North Station Draw One Bridge is a vital link 
And we wouldn't be standing here today without the leadership and support of so many, Governor Maury Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, for their visionary leadership, unwavering commitment to all the people that live, work, and play here in Massachusetts. And thank you for allowing me to be part of this team. Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator Ed Markey, and our entire Massachusetts congressional delegation, your tireless advocacy in Washington has been instrumental in securing this funding. I'd also like to thank our le state legislative partners for their continued support during this time at the MBTA. Boston Mayor Michelle Wu for her partnership and shared vision of a more connected, sustainable city. The Biden-Harris administration and Federal Transit Regional Administrator Pete Butler and Deputy Administrator Michelle Mullinger for their unwavering commitment towards our transportation infrastructure. And again, to our state legislature for their leadership and support in helping get us to this point and to our MBTA board, Chair Glenn, and all of the board members for their continued driving us towards excellence. And Secretary Tibbetts Nutt, for your strategic leadership at the state level. The dedicated team at the MBTA, including our grants and capital delivery team, whose expertise and hard work have been crucial to this success. Glenn Geiler and her grants team have been able to secure over $1.2 billion in grants and, and MBTA commitments. Sam Zhao, Chief Engineer and Leading Capital Delivery, worked collaboratively with Glenn, ensuring that our application for this grant was not only competitive, but as you can see, successful. Let's truly hear it for all of them. <clears throat> it truly was a team effort. From every department to everyone who provided letters of support, we all work collaboratively to develop an application and to get here today. Go Team Massachusetts, for sure. And of course, to our riders, our riders are at the heart of everything we do at the T. Your patience, your feedback, and trust to us to continually improve. And we know we have so much more to do, but every day we wake up determined as ever to succeed and achieve as much as we can for you, your families, and the communities that we serve. Today I stand before you with a sense of pride and excitement. The incredible news marks a pivotal moment in the history of the MBTA. The U.S. Department of Transportation, as everyone has said, has awarded us nearly half a billion dollars, $472,316.6 million dollars uh, to replace and modernize the North Station drawbridge. This depression era drawbridge vital to commuter and regional rail, the Amtrak down Easter route. This is the largest federal award the T has ever received, and it's a testament to the hard work and dedication and vision of everyone involved in this project. These grants are highly competitive, and winning means an acknowledgement of our ability to follow through and deliver. The funding comes from the Multimodal Project Discretionary Grants National Infrastructure Project Assistance Program, and it's not just about replacing a bridge, it's about reimagining the future of transportation in our region, envisioning a greater reliability and smoother operations, reducing congestion outside of North Station, leading to more comfortable and efficient journey for all of our riders. The replacement of this bridge will improve safety, giving peace of mind to everybody. It creates good paying union jobs, providing a significant boost to our local economy. It also takes big steps towards climate resiliency by elevating vital infrastructure components above sea level rise, ensuring continuity of operations for generations to come. Having successfully coordinated and continue to coordinate with the Massachusetts Historic Commission, City of Boston and Cambridge, as well as DCR, to minimize impacts of a new structure on the historic integrity of the Charles River Basin. And as a result of this funding, we will get to move forward with the replacement of the Draw One Bridge with three new vertical lift bridges, the construction of a new signal tower, and, and the new signals and control tower, and the comprehensive upgrade of track and signal infrastructure. All of this terminology a little technical, but what most important here, with this funding, we are building the future while delivering for today. A world-class regional rail network north of Boston. 11 million passenger trips will improve. That's a daily average of 30,000 riders today with every intention to see that ridership number grow. And as a result of innovative planned construction methods, we will be able to maintain commuter rail services during construction and maintain on-time performances for trains at North Station. Eight active tracks at North Station maintained during the project 
a minimum of four active tracks over this Charles River Bridge throughout construction, minimizing service disruptions. My passion for infrastructure goes way back. I go all the way back to the 80s when I was involved with bridge inspection in New York City. Years of interesting times due to disinvestment and maintenance. The challenge, how to keep people moving safely while fixing the infrastructure. It's taught me a valuable lesson and careful assessment, strategic planning, and consistent effort, we can and are turning things around. We didn't fix New York bridges overnight, step by step, but progress was made. And guess what? We're doing that right here in Massachusetts. That guide has approached throughout my career, and now as we accept this historic grant for this new bridge project here at the MBTA, I'm reminded of a few lessons. The award is a resounding vote of confidence in the MBTA and in the future of public transportation in Massachusetts. It reflects the tireless effort of our team, the visionary leadership of the Healy Driscoll administration, and the unwavering support of our federal and local partners. I want to express my deepest gratitude to Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for their steadfast commitment to improving our transportation infrastructure. Their leadership has been instrumental in securing this funding and positioning Massachusetts as a leader in innovative, innovative transportation solutions. This grant is not just about building a bridge, we're unlocking the potential for a more improved, efficient, reliable, expansive rail service, increased capacity and growth. This is about building a better future for our public transit system and communities. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Chairman Aaron Mikowitz to the podium. Thank you, Mr. General Manager. I appreciate uh, the kind words, and I appreciate the, um, the work you continue to do. And I'm actually impressed you, you were able to get the board to say, well, everything's on time today, uh, which I, I don't know if that was uh, done on purpose. But that's because of your good work. That's because of your hard work, and I appreciate that. Uh, thank you all for, uh, for being here today, because this is such a critical day uh, and such a celebratory day. You know, we are celebrating a, a project that is going to uh, uh, breed new life into the economy here into Massachusetts, bring new people into Massachusetts. It is a gateway project to the city of Boston. Uh, we have a number of gateway projects in, into the city of Boston that are happening right now. You see the North Washington Street Bridge is almost completed. You see the bus terminal happening, uh, being built, uh, uh, re refurbished and, um, and rebuilt over at South Station. Uh, this maybe isn't as easy to see for everyone because it's obviously behind us here, uh, but it is just as important and critically uh, critical to our economy, critical to our growth, uh, and critical to the, to the future of Massachusetts. So I applaud, uh, you know, today getting to this point, making sure that we, we, uh, we got this uh, federal grants, uh, and making sure that we ended up uh, getting this project done and actually being able to continue moving forward in our transit system. I congratulate Governor Healy and her administration uh, for all their hard work, for not, not giving up, not giving an inch, uh, and making sure that we get every single dollar that we possibly can. Uh, from the federal government. Um, we're going to be able to uh, do that even further with the federal funds bill that we passed recently, being able to leverage our robust uh, rainy day fund and making sure that we can uh, access more federal dollars and have, you know, be better in, uh, in place for competition. I want to thank our congressional delegation. Um, I think they actually grabbed one of the trains uh, that just left uh, here earlier, but they, they you know, uh, Senator Warren, Senator Markey and our entire congressional delegation. Uh, it is, uh, you know, being the House Ways and Means Chair, I know how important it is for members of the House and in, in, in the Massachusetts House to bring home the bacon, to bring home uh, money to their district, to making sure that they are fighting for those dollars. Uh, and they, uh, our congressional delegation is doing that every single day out, out in Washington, making sure that any opportunity that comes about, we are first in line in making sure that we are going to get those dollars done. And I appreciate the Biden-Harris administration uh, for making sure that the infrastructure bill got passed. Uh, and that we had this opportunity today. And lastly, I just want to thank our mayor uh, for keeping our city room, uh, moving forward uh, and running so smoothly. And, uh, and I appreciate everything that we're doing there. And thank you for, uh, for having me here today. And congratulations. And uh, with that, I'm going to pass it on to my partner in the legislature, uh, someone I share a district with and who, who is uh, the rep, I mean, the senator for this area, Senator Liddy Edwards. Good morning, everyone. Um, today is uh, a day that reflects the many hands and many levels of people who came together to make sure that we have this incredible investment in our transportation infrastructure. And just as a reminder, this, the returns on this investment are also many, uh, many levels and may not be seen today. The returns on transportation infrastructure include access to housing throughout the state and throughout the region. It includes making sure that we have good jobs. 
and a growth in our economy. As uh, Senator Markey noted, it is also a matter of justice for people in the disability community for their ability to access and move around the state. I want to also note that it is a return on our investment in our environmental infrastructure. Our lungs are cleaner. Uh, we're building a greener future, especially as noted that a lot of the infrastructure is going to be greener, going to be electric, going to be battery focused. So this today is an investment that has many returns at many different levels. And the Healy administration has demonstrated over and over again how it's all connected, whether it's through the MBTA laws and how we're building around our transportation infrastructure, whether it is assuring that we have greener and more uh, fu uh, stronger future. Uh, but I also wanted to note that another person and leader that I'm going to be bringing up has demonstrated on the local level, at the municipal level, how this is all connected. And that not only do federal dollars flow to state coffers and make sure that they get down to the uh, municipal levels, but when you are the mayor of the hub of those municipal levels, you are also demonstrating every single day how to make a city more green, more efficient, and more accessible. So with that, I'd love to introduce Mayor Michelle Wu. Thank you so much, Senator. Thank you to everyone here for all of your hard work every single day, but especially today when we have a lot to celebrate, it's just an honor to be here with everyone. Um, first, I want to thank whoever it was on the governor's team or, or uh, Secretary Tibbetts Nutt or General Manager Ang for making sure that we held this right here in the middle of everything happening because this is the best way to get a sense of not only, as was pointed out, how much is happening, how many different destinations and trains and the complicated logistics of it all, but also who this matters for. As we've been standing here or sitting here, you see people carrying rolling suitcases onto their next destination, carrying briefcases on their way to work. This is busy all throughout the day, every single hour with community members who are meeting up with friends to come to Boston and enjoy a nice night out or cheer for one of our championship teams, for people who are coming here to seek health care and to get the, that desperately needed access to services and then back home at night. So this could not be more essential. It could not be more fundamental to every part of every issue that we are fighting for, for residents of the city and the Commonwealth. And to have a grant like this happen of this scale, of this transformative nature, two things have to be true. First is that there has to be effective, relentless advocacy by those who have influential voices. And so to our federal delegation, to the state delegation, to the governor and all of the people who pushed hard for this grant and lobbied, it would not have come had Massachusetts not had such influence and ability to keep at it. But the second thing that has to be true is a little bit of what General Manager Eng said, that there has to be recognition of the competence, effectiveness, and ability to deliver so that those giving out the grant can trust that it will be put to good use and will deliver exactly what it's supposed to. And we would not be receiving this grant had there not been so much proof already during the Healy Driscoll administration, during Secretary Tibbetts Nutt's leadership, during General Manager Ang's time in this role, that Massachusetts is transforming the MBTA and making progress every single day at a scale that we have not seen before. So thank you so much to that team for delivering. We feel this in Boston every single day. All of the issues that we're hearing about, about the future of downtowns or cities or, or what a commercial sector and what residents are experiencing depends on the ability to, to get around. And so with that infrastructure now on track to become the most modern and updated and most efficient version, we are well on our way and we thank everyone here for all that they're doing every single day to make it possible for Boston to be home for everyone and for our residents across the Commonwealth to be connected to our hub. Congratulations. Okay, and now it is my honor to hand it back to Governor Healy. Thank you so much, Mayor. And um, uh, really appreciate everybody for, uh, for being here today. Really appreciate this entire team behind us for the work that's been done to, to get us to this point. Really excited about all that is ahead for, for Massachusetts in this region. And um, I don't know about you, but um, I think um, I, I, owe, I owe a special uh, debt to, to Phil Ang, and um, it's his birthday today. 
And <laughs> so his birthday gift was $472 million in a press conference right here at North Station. Uh, happy, birth happy birthday, Phil. Happy birthday, Phil. Um, with that, um, we're happy to take any questions on topic. Boy. What was the question? About How long? So we are looking right now at having uh, industry engagement, but we will have this contract on the street next year. Um, the projections earlier were eight years to completion. However, I'm going to challenge ourselves and we're going to look to beat that. Uh, but that was the early indications of, of the dur construction duration. So that is one of the exciting challenges of being in the Northeast and in, in an area that serves so many people. Um, how do you keep people moving and how do you control, repair, fix, and rebuild the infrastructure? The, the project right now, there's some early action things that are ongoing. We're, we're procuring, uh, we'll be procuring switches and things of that nature for track improvements. Um, that work will begin later this year, actually some of the switches right here in North Station. But what we'll be doing during the actual project is likely is you'll build a new structure right adjacent to the existing structure. Two new tracks will be placed there. All the switches to allow train movements, to allow the, the ability to continuously have four tracks through this bridge. Um, and then when the new bridge is in place, then you could take two tracks out of place, replace that section, and you'll do it in phases. You'll do it in a stage construction approach. And that's the way uh, we will tackle this, working with whatever construction partner we have. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.